Okay. In our next sec next section, um, we are joined by um, uh, Alina Bloom, um, who's going to be talking about uh, the open source seagrass and blue carbon mapping in support of the nationally determined contribution contributions. Um, uh, she's who she's recently graduated in uh, applied geography from the RWTH Ashen University, and their main focus is on remote sensing and climatology. And uh, she'll be presenting um, uh, results of her master thesis, where she focused on uh, seagrass remote sensing and carbon stocks, and uh, which she completed in comparison with uh, the German Aerospace Center. Over to you, Alina. Hey, thank you for the introduction. Um, let me share my screen. Okay, perfect. Ooh, okay, so hi everyone, thanks for the introduction. So as already mentioned, I'm going to present my master thesis and how I used open source data and the cloud computing platform Google Earth Engine to map Bahamian seagrass and its current stocks. I will also talk about how this supports the naturally determined contributions of a Paris Agreement. I conducted this research in cooperation with the Global Seagrass Watch Project of the German Aerospace Center, which is supported by the GEO Google Earth Engine program. So let's start with what seagrass is. Seagrasses are marine flowering plants which grow in intertidal and subtidal waters. They can form vast meadows and like terrestrial plants, they use photosynthesis to grow and have a pollination mechanism to reproduce. They also have rhizomes and roots to kind of anchor in the soil. Here you can see the global distribution of seagrass in green and the species richness in red. We can find the seagrass ecosystem in at least 157 countries where it covers over 300,000 square kilometers. Just to put that in perspective, that's about the size of Germany. Seagrass provides a number of benefits for humans and the global climate. For instance, it reduces wave energy and minimizes erosion. It serves as a food and nursing ground for many marine animals and therefore supports the fishing industry. But most importantly, it sequesters carbon through photosynthesis. Seagrass accounts for about 10 to 18% of the oceanic yearly carbon burial with sequestration rates 35 times faster than tropical rainforests. This carbon is stored in the biomass and the soil. Um, the importance of the seagrass ecosystem has been recognized by several countries, which have included this ecosystem within their NDCs to support the Paris Agreement's goal of climate change mitigation and adaptation. Today, I will focus on my mapping results for the Bahamas. Um, its coastal habitats have been mapped before, but seagrass wasn't the main focus, and these approaches used imagery with either a lower resolution or with a low signal to noise ratio. The first step of my mapping approach was to create a multi temporal composite on which I could base the classification. For this, I utilized four years worth of Sentinel 2 data, which is freely available within Google Earth Engine. The Bahamian Exclusive Economic Zone covers over 600,000 square kilometers, resulting in a total of about 19,000 images for those four years. I applied a number of pre-processing methods like cloud masking and sun clean reductions to create yeah, the composite you can see here. This composite combines about 10,000 images. To reduce misclassification, I mask areas in which zebras can't grow, so land and optically deep waters. This leaves us with a shallow water area of about 114,000 square kilometers. And here you can see some examples of Bahamian seagrass meadows. For the binary classification, so seagrass versus non-seagrass, I used two different approaches which were based on data taken from the Allen Coral Atlas. This data includes ground truth data and the data classified by the atlas. I harmonized the data by discarding all classified pixels, which didn't fall within the spectral bounds of the ground truth data. And to avoid mixed pixels, I also discarded seagrass pixels, which didn't fall within the 80th percentile of the ground truth data. So pixels which are brighter and therefore probably include sandy areas. The first approach used the ground truth data and a geographical split to create training and validation data. 
The second approach used the ground truth data as validation data and the classified data as training data. For both approaches, I used a random, class random forest classifier in probability mode. Here you can see the Sentinel-2 composite, the minimum and maximum seagrass extent in green, and the marine protected areas in orange. The ground truth data based approach showed a smaller seagrass extent than the approach based on the classified data. I mapped an area of 12 to 28,000 square kilometers of seagrass, which equals 25 to 60% of the area mapped by the Allen Coral Atlas. I combined these numbers with country specific in situ carbon data taken from freely available literature. And this results in a carbon storage potential of 182 to 456 million megagrams and a yearly sequestration of 17 to 40 times the amount of CO2 emitted by the country in 2019, making the Bahamas carbon neutral. This number shows the importance of the secret ecosystem for the global climate, but especially for the Bahamas. However, only 6 to 11% of this area in the Bahamas lies within marine protected areas. To preserve the secret ecosystem services, Bahamian authorities need to conserve and restore this habitat. Thank you all for listening. And if you would like to take a closer look at my mapping results, you can check out my Earth Engine app, which I will post in the chat. And feel free to contact me via email or LinkedIn. Uh, thank you, Alina, for, for that presentation. Um, yeah. Uh, to anyone who wants to reach out to Alina, please, uh, you may uh, uh, capture those details and uh, reach out to her. If you have any questions or, or link ups or research areas you want, may want to discuss with her. Um, I think uh, that, that, that uh, caps off our sessions for today. And uh, thank you, Alina, again for joining us. Um, I will say goodbye for now. Bye. Yeah. So, okay. Excellent. Yes, thank you, Lena. Very interesting. And uh, thank you, Isaacson. I think uh, that was our uh, last presenter. So, I think that concludes our session right now. Um, okay. I, uh, I appreciate everyone that tuned in to uh, listen to the, the very first Open Earth Observations track at uh, FOS4G this 2021. And uh, I'm just glancing at the comments here. And uh, I think we can conclude, Isaacson, and uh, maybe uh, a year from now, we can we can all meet somewhere in the world in person for FOS4G 22, but we will see. Yeah, true, <laughs> we'll see, the boy. we'll see. <laughs> I look forward to that. <laughs> yes, indeed, me too, okay. Thank you, everybody, for your time and your attention. Please take care and uh, uh, have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.